Well, you know him as one of the all-time greats in chess. But now Gary Kasparov is taking a hard look at Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and NFTs. And we've got Gary himself here on the show today. He is, of course, a vast security ambassador and world chess champion. We've also got David Hollerith joining in on the conversation. Uh, Gary, it's great to have you on today. I want to first, we're going to talk about your NFT launch from last year. But first, I, I'm just curious how this evolution happened. Because we always hear your name and we think about okay. chess. What piqued your interest in crypto? Technology. I, I was a pioneer in the game of chess, bringing machines to uh, help us with our preparation. As you remember, I even tried to fight the machines uh, with uh, mixed success. Yeah, and I believe that technology is a very important way for us to, to make all sorts of improvements. And for me, um, the, uh, the crypto is a part of this, uh, of this process. It's inevitable. We, we can uh, debate pros and cons, but at the end of the day, you know, the world is turning into digital. And of course, the methods of payments will, will have to follow. Hi, Gary. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Um, you're, I know you're also currently a uh, se security ambassador for the software company Avist. And given that, you know, I understand you must be fully aware of sort of uh, the billions of dollars that uh, cryptocurrency investors have lost uh, over the last year uh, through scams and hacks. And so I was sort of curious, you know, how do you think uh, cryptocurrency investors and newcomers should sort of handle this kind of environment? Look, uh, I think the amount of money that's being lost, and I just you can't deny it, it's still, you know, it's, it's a drop in the ocean compared to money that's being stolen from big banks through various uh, hacking operations. Unfortunately, you know, again, this is the us, you know, having benefits from new technologies, also carrying new risks, and and crypto is no different from from other traditional as what we think safe uh, methods of of organizing payments. With uh, every month, uh, uh, if not every week, you know, we read about massive attacks on on the most established financial institutions in the world, with um, millions and millions of of accounts being hacked and and data being removed. So. Again, it's it's a shield and sword, and uh, and I've been working with Avast for six years, and you know every new challenge requires you know um, um, a new tools and new algorithms to fight back. And uh, while hackers using AI, so the uh, defense also is using AI, and uh, and I still think that we are we are ahead in this game. So I would not be too. I would not be panicking about about the um, the losses that happen. Again, I'm sorry for those who did it, but be, be, be just be more aware about the threats and uh, and uh, of us as other companies in this in this um, area of business. They're doing absolutely best to to offer uh, protection of individual data. And going back to um, NFTs, you know, uh, last year you launched launched an NFT collection. I was just curious, in general. Uh, what's the value you see in NFTs? Um, there are obviously thousands of uh, projects out there. Um, and do you own any yourself? Uh, no, I don't own anyone yet, but it's just, I think, again, it's, it's, it's a reflection of, of the new demand of the public. Again, it's, you may say it's, it's, uh, it, its value is, is, um, is fictional, but as everything else, at the end of the day, you know, p things have value because we believe these things have value. And uh, and I think that this, 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 this industry that now is obviously, you know, facing setbacks as, as a whole crypto world. So we'll, 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 eventually, we'll, we'll come back because, again, people, you know, people want to see more and more elements of our life to be um, uh, uh, to, to stay on, on, on digital side. And, and NFT is no exception. And I tried to. Uh, Again, with a limited success, so uh, it's more than about 1.1 million dollars uh, uh, at, 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 at that rate was 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 raised for collection of 32 NFTs. But I, it was, you know, my my genuine attempt to present, you know, my life in NFTs, and I thought it was, uh, you know, well received by by the community. Hey, Gary, it's Brian Chung here. I mean, some of those uh, images that we were just showing kind of highlight your time in Russia. And I wanted to kind of just shift gears now to what's been going on in Ukraine. You've been a very outspoken uh, critic of the Russian government and how they've been going about this invasion. You are recently just added to a list of foreign agents by the Russian government. What do you think about what we've seen in Ukraine, especially now that this has gone on for a few months? 
Uh, yeah, when, when, when the Russian government called you foreign agent, it means enemy of the state. So that's, uh, let's be very clear about it. But again, I live outside of Russia in exile for almost 10 years. So I basically, I don't care what, how they call me because I believe that this regime, Vladimir Putin's regime, is the main threat for global security. I've been saying it for years. I've been predicting this war for at least uh, 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 seven years since the publication of my book, Winter is Coming, back in 2015. And now we are witnessing uh, war crimes on an industrial scale. And the big problem is that the free world is yet to uh, decide on the strategy. Yes, Ukraine has been receiving support, vital support, but it's not enough, not nearly enough for Ukraine to defeat Putin's invading armies. And I don't think that the free world uh, should and, uh, and can accept uh, uh, any other result but Ukrainians' um, uh, unconditional win that will uh, lead to the liberation of Ukraine and, and the rest restoration of its, of its uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Because if, God forbid, Putin succeeds, then other countries like Poland or, or Lithuania could be targeted, NATO countries. So it's, it's more than just fight for um, uh, saving Ukraine. It's a battle between front line uh, of the battle between freedom and tyranny. And, and Gary, on that front, you have been critical of the West's response, um, saying that you know Western leaders should not be number one helping Putin or legitimizing him. What should be the response when you think about the sanctions that have been handed down in the U.S.? Russian oil has been been banned. The EU has moved in that direction. What more do you think needs to be done? And, and is ultimately the goal? Should that be regime change? Look, I don't want you to say regime change because that's that sounds frightening. But if you make it clear that sanctions will not be lifted until Ukraine is fully liberated and Crimea, of course, included uh, and reparations being paid. And we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars because at least one third of Ukraine has been decimated now. Uh, Russia fired more than 2,500 missiles to Ukraine. This is, that's the, this is a war that the world has not seen since uh, World War II. Um, and war criminals brought to justice. That basically equals regime change without saying that, but we don't see yet political will. Great Britain, Poland, Baltic states, they are doing absolutely the best. Uh, France and Germany, uh, they are just way, way behind, and they're trying to work on what they call saving Putin's face. And the United States is somewhere in, 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 in the middle. Yeah, we hear statements from the White House, uh, but as I recently pointed out in my Twitter, uh, the, uh, US, the American harvesters that have been supplied to Ukraine, they, they didn't have the uh, most important part of that, which is the advanced electronics. So they are li literally blind. So it seems to me that the Americans... Uh, uh, and 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 European uh, European allies, uh, with except of of Britain and 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 Poland and Bolts, uh, trying to find this balance. And I think it's absolutely unacceptable. Ukraine must be provided every tool, every weapon, every measure that is required for them to win this war. Yeah, uh, very much a humanitarian issue still developing over there. Gary Kasparov, a vast security ambassador and world chess champion. Thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us. And thanks again to David Hollerith, the Biography Answers. Appreciate it.